Dominic Quiet Dom Cirillo has passed away at the age of 94. Dominic Quiet Dom Cirillo, in a nutshell, was a long-time high-ranking member of the Genovese crime family, long holding allegiance to the family's Manhattan location. Cirillo rose to power to Capo Regime, then briefly served as acting boss for imprisoned boss Vincent Chingigante before stepping down to serve as consigliere. Cirillo was born in East Harlem on July 4, 1929 to Colombo crime family capo regine Alphonse Cirillo, who served as a made man under Joseph Mariocco when it was the Perfacci crime family. His father was a first-generation Italian-American immigrant from Potenza, Italy. His father died of unknown causes sometime before 1963, but was later made infamous after he was one of the hundreds of organized crime figures named in the testimony of mob turncoat Joseph Valachi, a disgraciad. Dominic grew up on East 117th Street in East Harlem and as a teenager dropped out of Benjamin Franklin High School. He was an amateur boxer who boxed at neighborhood youth clubs and briefly pursued a career as a professional middleweight boxer. He was a husky man who stood at 5'10 and grew to be almost 200 pounds by the 1990s. He was a close personal friend and criminal partner of Vincent Gigante from a young age who would later become heir to the Genovese crime family of which Dominic served in. In 1949, Dominic, who at the time was a 20-year-old welterweight, was knocked out in three matches and had one match drawn before retiring. In 1953, at the age of 23, he pled guilty to overseeing a heroin trafficking ring that was said to have grossed up to $20,000 a day. That's 1953. For his drug trafficking conviction, he served nearly four years in Federal Correctional Institution in Michigan before returning to East Harlem. Between 1958 and 1965, he was arrested four times for consorting with known criminals, which were all later dismissed. He was married to an Italian-American woman named Bella, who bore him two children, Nicholas and Anne-Marie. Whenever fellow criminal associates would want to mention Cirillo's name, they used sign language where they put their finger to their lips, which would mean that they were discussing Dominic. He claimed to be a retired construction worker and said to have lived off of $510 a month in Social Security checks. He lived in the country club section of the Northeast Bronx near Pelham Bay and East Chester Bay. His first conviction came in 1952 when he was in prison on narcotic charges. In subsequent years, he grew closer to Gigante, who was seen in the mid-80s as a de facto boss of the Genovese crime family. While Gigante served as boss on the streets, Cirillo served as a messenger between Gigante and the other capo regimes of the Genovese crime family. As Cirillo's low-key style earned him his nickname Quiet Dom and helped him avoid the gaze of the authorities for many years. Remember this. This is a true gangster because... He was silent. He was quiet. He didn't have to be loud. I, lo I, love, I love reading stories about gentlemen like this. I love it. A lot of guys could learn a lesson from Quiet Dom. After Gigante was in prison in 1997 for racketeering and conspiracy charges, the leadership of the Genovese crime family passed to a committee ruling panel known as the Administration, led by Cirillo. In this capacity, Cirillo represented the Genovese in their dealings with the other Mafia family members of New York City, even though Gigante remained the boss. In this way, Cirillo served as acting boss and was seen by U.S. authorities as the most powerful member of the Genovese family. However, in 1998, Cirillo stepped down as acting boss because of a heart attack and recovered his position as capo regime in the Genovese crime family that same year. There was a story about Cirillo's son, Nicholas, who was not believed to be a made man, who disappeared on May 9, 2004. Three weeks later, his abandoned car was discovered, but Nicholas Cirillo had never been found. Investigators believe the younger Cirillo was killed after he insulted the son of acting Bonanno crime family boss Vincent Vinnie Gorgias Basquiano and capo regime Dominic Chicali. It remains unclear whether this would have been allowed to happen without the explicit permission of... Dominic Cirillo. Sources in 2010 say that Dom ordered the death of Nicholas on Mother's Day of 2004. On December 4th of 2004, Randolph Pizzolo, who allegedly bragged about his role in the murder and disappearance of Nicholas, was found shot 
to death. On October 18, 2005, Cirillo, who again was recognized as acting boss for Gigante and four Genovese capos, Lawrence Little Larry Dentico, John Johnny Saucers Barbado, and Anthony Tico Antico, pled guilty on charges of racketeering and racketeering conspiracy. Cirillo was sentenced to 48 months in prison and forced to pay 75000 in restitution. On August 22, 2008, the 79-year-old Cirillo was released from federal prison after serving more than three years. After being acting boss following the death of longtime family godfather Vincent de Chingigante in December of 2005, Cirillo began to serve as conciliary to the Genovese family. It appears that he had stepped down in 2015 to allow former street boss Peter Petey Red Di Chiara to serve as conciliary. And on January 14th of 2024, quiet Dom Dominic Cirillo, who was a man's man, an honorable man, a strict man, a strong man, a man that may have allowed the murder of his own son because of disrespect. That's, that, that, that's just, that's fucking wild. I don't even know where I stand on that right now because on this platform, we never speak ill of those that have passed away. The case is closed. The accounts is closed. We never speak wrong. Maybe I'll put up the story of Dominic Cirillo's son next week. It was a cra- it's a crazy story. It's a crazy story. Big Rich, Queens, New York City, where we keep it busy on a Saturday afternoon. Frigid. Frigid. It feels like four degrees outside. But inside, I got some Top Dog Sour Diesel, a little sunshine for the soul. Let me know what you're smoking on. Let me know what city you're smoking in. And make sure... You always wipe your feet on the way in and bless the atmosphere. We will talk soon. Salute.